Okay, lesson seven. I see only the past. This idea is particularly difficult to believe at first, yet it is the rationale for all of the preceding ones. It is the reason why nothing that you see means anything. Like when I see, for example, a donut, um, it doesn't, you know, it, I, it doesn't mean anything because basically my ego is just seeing all of my projections and perceptions of whatever it's seeing. So it actually it doesn't see. It sees like uh, it's just seeing its projections, it's just seeing its past associations, it's just making it up. <clears throat> so whenever the ego sees something, it just makes up something which is not real. It's got n no, no connection to reality. It is the reason why you have given everything you see all the meaning uh, that it has for you. So the lesson is I see only the past. Well, I'm just seeing my past associations and my own projections in whatever I'm looking at. I have no idea of what it is. It is the reason why you do not understand anything you see. How can I understand anything if I'm just making up a load of projections and beliefs that I'm just projecting on it? I cannot understand it because I've just already projected all my rubbish onto it and think I know it when I have no clue of what it is. Um, it is the reason why your thoughts do not mean anything <clears throat> And they, and, they're why like, and, and they are like the things you see. Now this harks to the earlier lessons, like the, you know, like the mobile phone is just as meaningless as the lamp, which is just as meaningless as the plant, because everything is equally... <clears throat> you, want, you want to strip everything the ego is projecting as a meaning onto everything. So like certain things have what I call a, n no projection on them or, or neutral, like, um, and those thoughts tend not to stick in the head. Like if I had the thought, the grass is green, I wouldn't remember that within a split second. It has no meaning. So, but if I sort of see like um, a chocolate cake, it's like it, it has, a, you know, it's not the same as see, seeing like a thought of uh, green grass. Chocolate cake has a lot of meaning and projection and associations. So I, I don't see it. I just see a load of projections. I can't see it in truth. So it is, like, it is the reason why your thoughts do not mean anything and why they are like the things you see. So like every object I see is totally meaningless and when we're doing the lessons we're, t we're saying that everything is equally meaningless or has no meaning or value. Also it's saying very importantly that our thoughts, every thought in consciousness is equally meaningless. They're all like you can pay no attention to them. Because it's out of the thoughts that the projected, the thoughts like create a projected false reality and you think you're seeing something but what you're seeing is just your own projections. You don't see what it would, you're not able to see what it would be like to see without any of your projections from your ego. Obscuring and distorting and making a, like a horrific representation which bears no resemblance to what it'd be like to see things without your thoughts or your projections being cast onto everything. <clears throat> so it is the reason why you, you, you are never upset for the reason you think. Well, you know, the reason you're upset is because you're, you're having, it's your past associations and projections. You know, like someone says, even if someone says to you, like you're in a relationship, someone says, I don't love you any longer. I mean, if that had no meaning and no associations, it'd be like an alien saying, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, that's okay. it didn't affect me. I was like, <laughs> someone says so, so, boogity bo, boogity bo, and you go, and I'm just like, okay, well, that was pretty meaningless, you know. It'll just like, you know, they're still an innocent, innocent, you know, they're just as innocent as a plant or as a flower, you know. It's like, so there was some noise, you know, there's no associate. You don't go into rage. You don't go into rage and obsession and I'm going to kill you and, and all that <laughs> stuff, see. So, so that's, um, so that, you know, that's why, you know, the, that's why, you know, you see only the past and that's why you're insane if you see only the past, mm. you're, you're not in truth. So the reason why you're never upset, so you're never upset for the reason you think, you're just upset because of all the, all the, you know, your ego's past associations which are not based on truth because your ego is just seeing a demented reality. So <clears throat> it is this reason why you're upset, because you see something that is not there. When you, what you're seeing with your ego's representations is not there, it's just a made-up fiction. So, old ideas about t 
time are very difficult to change because everything you believe is rooted in time. You believe in time, you believe in the past, you believe in everything you've been programmed by, by the collective consciousness, by your family. So by this world, this dualistic world of perception and all of its fear-based limited ideas. So, um, so old ideas about time are very difficult to change because everything you believe is rooted in time and depends on your not learning these new ideas about it. Yet that is precisely what you need, new ideas about time. This first time idea is not really so strange as it may sound at first. Look at a cup, of, look at a cup for example. Do you see a cup? Or are you merely reviewing your past experiences of picking up a cup, being thirsty, drinking from a cup, feeling the rim of a cup against your lips, having breakfast and so on? Are, you, are not your aesthetic reactions to the cup too based on your past experiences? How else would you know whether or not this kind of cup will break if you drop it? What do you know about the cup except that you learned in, in the past? You would have no idea what this cup is except for your past learning. Do you then really see it? So can you really see a cup without all your history and your baggage being projected upon it, you see? So if you're seeing it with your baggage, you're not really seeing it in truth. So look about you. This is equally true of whatever you look at. Acknowledge this by applying the idea for today indiscriminately to whatever catches your eye, for example. Now, here's a word that is used often in the course, like you use the lessons indiscriminately at everything. Because your ego will always want to make an exception. Like, I don't, you know, I don't mind making like a cup meaningless, but I'm not going to make a donut meaningless. You know, I'm not going to make, a, you know, I'm happy to make a leaf meaningless, but I'm not going to be happy to make a 50 pound note meaningless. You know, or, or I'm happy to make, I'm happy to make, um, the, the man on the street meaningless, but I'm not happy to make George Clooney meaningless or Ryan Gosling meaningless, you see. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, so the ego will always like, but it's saying indiscriminately because everything is equally meaningless. Like nothing should grab your attention and your eyes should stick on it. So you just say, it's, you know, Ryan Gosling is equally as meaningless as the phone, which is equally, you know, I see only the past in Ryan Gosling, I see only the past in this plant, I see only the, you know, if people are getting a reaction to Ryan Gosling. Right, Ryan, Ryan <laughs> Gosling. His lesson is really bad for that, isn't so, it? So, um, yeah. yeah. So you can, you can see, like, people light up with a donut, but they don't light up with a table. Yeah. You can see what, what's happening. So now you apply the lesson. So I see only the past in this pencil. I see only the past in this shoe. You can have a photo of Ryan Gosling on the table. I see only the past in Ryan Gosling. I see only the past in my hand, I see only the past in that body, I see only the past in that face. So it's slowly like indiscriminately taking away all your projection. Nothing is more important or equally more important. Some of the other lessons tell you to look at everything equally for one second. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in active addiction, you'll just look at one thing. Like I'm a food addict, so if there was a, a donut or a chocolate cake on the table, It'd be like I'd be glued there. I'd be like looking for like three minutes of a chocolate cake and then one second at everyone else and then back to three minutes of a chocolate cake. So it teaches you like look, look at e everything equally for a second. Say everything is equally meaningless. I see only the past and everything equally. Don't hold your, when your ego is holding something as being very attractive or very negative, you want to let that go. Because when nothing is attractive or negative, then you know, in Buddhism they call it the attractions or the aversions. Nothing can really pull you out of the moment because it's so attractive or take you away from the moment because you want to run away from it. The attractions and the aversions. So everything is neutral. It's like all words are neutral. When all words are neutral, whatever someone says to you is not going to affect you. Whatever physical body just comes into the room is not going to affect you because they're all equally equally the same, like someone who's, uh, who's a supermodel or a 90-year-old man, you know, with a walking stick, you know, it's like, it's all equally the same. So the key, oh, there's a bit more to the lesson, okay. So do not linger, okay, so saying what I was going to say, do not linger over any one thing in particular. 
but remember to uh, to um, omit nothing specifically. Yes, so again, like everything, like when a baby looks, everything is exquisitely equally like with wonder. Like a piece of tissue is equally like as wondrously beautiful as a diamond, which is as wondrously beautiful as a blade of grass. There's no like ego filter, like a diamond is more like, you know, like to a baby like Ryan Gosling and an, a 90 year old man would be like exquisitely equally the same <coughs> because they think like the baby wouldn't have obsession about either the old man or Ryan Gosling because or, or a donut you know it still hasn't got that imprint that you know I need to be addicted and obsessed that donuts are better than broccoli so all of that is gone so glance briefly at each subject you see the Course in Miracles is actually giving you spiritual genius not to get hooked and obsessed or make anything like important. Do not make any person, situation or thought in your consciousness something you'll stick on or dwell on. Like donuts are good, broccoli is bad, Ryan Gosling is good, um, George Clooney is not so good because he's older or whatever it is, you see, you want to let all of that go. These are three or four practice periods each to last a minute or so will be enough. Now here's the thing with the Course in Miracles and why I recommend it. There's lots of spiritual programs but none of them teach you discipline um, like the Course in Miracles teaches you. Like I go to 12-step programs for addiction but they won't teach you this advanced stuff. Like be mindful of your thoughts. Also let go of the core of addiction. You know, the core of addiction is that you you allow the ego to project magical qualities onto things and you're not willing to fully 100% let them go. You see, because then you're going to get into the present moment. You mustn't let any thought in your consciousness be so attractive that it pulls you out of the now. There must be no person that pulls you out of the now. You know, as soon as something is, there's a meaningful thought or a meaningful person or a meaningful anything, you start to go off into hypnosis, into the drama of the ego, and you're pulled out of the infinite now. And, um, and then, you know, it's not, now you're relying on your ego. You're in, you're in fear, really, because the ego is like, if your ego really wants Ryan Gosling, you're going to be in fear of losing him or not getting him, or you're going to be an obsessed and fantasy, or if he says he's going to marry you, you're worried he might go off with another. So, you're often, but when, when you haven't got that, you can, enjoy, you can enjoy every moment and everything that's provided by the universe. And actually, when you let those go, you go, you go to these higher vibrations of complete trust. And actually, when you have those higher vibrations of complete trust, you'll be attracted to and the universe will give you totally, a totally different world to when you're in fear and control. When you're in fear and control, you just meet fearful and controlling situations over and people over and over again because you're at that vibration. So when you let it go, you go off into these higher vibrations.